Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are playing Mega Man and Base on Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance. And of course, like my previous videos, uh, I'm not playing it on Game Boy Advance. I'm actually playing it on a Game Boy Advance emulator on my modded Wii U. Of course, in case you're wondering, here is my Game Boy Advance copy running right here on my backlit modded GBA. There's my cartridge right there. But anyway, um, quality of the music is a little bit different, and it's quality of some of the sound effects, but maybe the, mainly the music. So I got the Super Nintendo ver uh, version, which is pre-recorded, and the sound from that's going to be coming through your left speaker, and the Game Boy Advance version, the sound's going to be coming through your right speaker. So you can just kind of like do this if you want to, if you want to kind of gauge the comparison to music there. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Oop, I got this upside down here. <laughs> so we'll hit start. And new game. And the funny thing about my um, my Super Nintendo cartridge, actually it's a Super Famicom cartridge because the game was never released in the United States until the Game Boy Advance version. But um, of course I'm picking Mega Man instead of base. Uh, base kind of plays more like Mega Man X. But uh, anyway, uh, Mega Man Base, it's actually Rockman and Forte on the uh, Super Famicom. And of course, Super Nintendos can play uh, Super Famicom games real easily, just with a simple modification. So don't even have to open it up, just take some pliers. <laughs> There's lots of videos out there to show you how to do that. But um, right off the bat, you can tell that the resolution is different because the Super Nintendo ran at a higher resolution than the Game Boy Advance. So you can see the detail is there, but you don't have as many pixels. So that's one of the disadvantages of the Game Boy Advance version is you can't see that far ahead of you. And this was actually kind of a difficult game. I remember when it came out on Game Boy Advance, I picked it up. I was, I was really happy with it. I really liked this game. I thought it was really good. But I never made it very far until I picked it up on Super Nintendo much later. But, you know, you can see it's kind of, you know, harder to see farther away. But, anyway. Uh, as far as the Mega Man series, you had Mega Man's 1 through 6, uh, made by Capcom, of course. They came out on uh, the NES, the, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Then uh, Mega Man 7 came out on the Super Nintendo, around the time Mega Man X2 and X3 came out on Super Nintendo. And then Mega Man 8 came out on the PlayStation, which I love Mega Man 8. I did like that six-way versus Let's Play video like a while back, and I was really happy with it. I really enjoyed it. I love Mega Man 8. But um, the Super Famicom was still uh, pretty popular in Japan, so they released basically not really Mega Man 5. Think of it more like Mega Man 8.5. Um, but they released that on the Super Famicom, which is the Japanese Super Nintendo, and they released that. Um, it had a lot of the assets and a lot of the sprites and sprite work from the PlayStation version basically ported over. So a lot of the graphics are taken from Mega Man 8 on the PlayStation, which is why you got it. the graphics in this is a lot much is much much better than uh, Mega Man 7. Of course, you don't have a lot of like the stuff on on screen stuff. Uh, things like that because of Super Nintendo limitations, but it still turned out really, really good. But of course, the PlayStation One was uh, ran the uh, Mega Man Eight at a much higher resolution than it did uh, Mega Man X or Mega Man Seven. So you're taking sprites from a system that ran at a better resolution. So that's why you don't get as uh, much uh, distance off in the you know, much draw distance and whatnot. Even though the sprites look bigger, it's because the pixels are bigger. And then, of course, you go from that to the Game Boy Advance, you're basically playing uh, games um, with PlayStation sprites on an even much smaller resolution screen. It's like half the resolution at that point. So I want to say like 380 by 240. I, I don't remember. Maybe 256 by 240 or something like that. And it's like the Game Boy Advance runs at like 160p or 180p. It's less than 200. It's less than 200 pixels vertically. <laughs> of course, uh, the main villain in this is a robot named King. Spoiler alert. Mute for 10 seconds. It's actually Dr. Wily. 
<laughs> so, anyway. Uh, like I said, this is actually a pretty difficult game. The first couple stages actually aren't too bad. But, um, of course, you got this, uh, the, the Jello monster here. <laughs> green, green Jello. That was a good band, by the way. You know, that Little Pig, Little Pig song? <laughs> uh, I think I had to go by, change the name to Green Jelly for a little while because of a trademark and then name Green Jello trademark. I'm not going to bother save. I'm going to continue. So, of course, the way you pick robots is a little bit different. You can only pick a certain amount at a time and it opens up different ones. So, even though it wasn't like the core Mega Man number series, it kind of gave him room to experiment a little bit, but it still has that traditional Mega Man formula. I'm going to play Frostman first. I think it's Frostman. Oh, Cold Man. My bad. Uh, Frostman is a different one. So Cold Man is the first one you want to beat, and then you want to uh, beat uh, Burner Man after that. Burner Man's really tough, and that's why the game is really, really tough and challenging. But once you get past Burner Man, the rest of the game isn't too bad. Burner Man's definitely the, the toughest part. Of course, I need to collect bolts there so I can uh, upgrade my weapons. And I'm not going to do like a full playthrough. I'm just only going to play a couple stages and just kind of you know, talk about the game and whatnot. But uh, my Super Nintendo cartridge... Actually, uh, I don't know if the battery needs to be replaced or what, but um, a lot of times my games will uh, erase when I go to play it again. So, But it's not too bad, because usually when I play it on Super Nintendo and I plug it in and relax on the couch, I usually start from scratch and do a full playthrough anyway. So I haven't really bothered to do a uh, battery swap on it. Of course, you can see where the, the, the game has to kind of scroll up and down a little bit to show some of the detail. Like I said, there's that resolution difference between the, the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy Advance. And you got those little CD icons there, and that kind of gives you like some art to unlock and whatnot. I'm already a little bit farther on the Super Nintendo version. But uh, I wish I would have played this more on Game Boy Advance when I had it. Just because I, di I didn't get very far on it. Just because I got stuck. I didn't know what Robot Master to beat after Cold Man, which is actually Burner Man. And there's a trick to beating Burner Man. And I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I, mean I was playing a lot of... Uh, well, I was also going to college as well at the same time. So I was kind of taking up most of my time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's such a good game. If you haven't played Mega Man at base, definitely, definitely give it a shot. Um, you know, I mean, you pick up a Super Famicom version. I bought mine for 30 bucks, but I think it's gone, uh, it's gone up in value more so now. But, um, yeah, definitely worth picking up. Um, even on Game Boy Advance, of course, it's harder on Game Boy Advance than Super Nintendo because of the resolution difference, but it's still a lot of fun to play. I'm... I w it's one of those games that I really wish they would have released it in uh, in the United States. And I think if the Nintendo 64 had gotten delayed a little bit more, I think they would have. Oh, got knocked down. See, I couldn't quite see the floor there because of the difference in resolution. So we'll try that again. I don't remember how far I recorded on the Super Nintendo version, but that video should leap back to the beginning. Oh, crap, I did it again. <laughs> uh, I think I'm down to one guy already. Am I? Uh, oh, I got one more reserve, so if I die, I got it. That'll be my last. But uh, anyway, if the Super Nintendo footage uh, gets to the end, it should loop back to the beginning. Well, crap. I am out of practice. I should have practiced this beforehand. Of course, um, the assets from this stage are taken from the Frostman stages from uh, Mega Man 8 on PlayStation 1 and also Sega Saturn, of course. Which is the definitive version of that game. <laughs> Definitely should have practiced. That's alright, we'll start over. We'll start over. Of course, on the Super Nintendo version, I'm already on Burner Man. But uh, there's actually two uh, two Robot Masters that are actually taken from Mega Man 8 as well. The other six are original characters. 
And they don't play exactly like they did in Mega Man 8. They play a little bit differently, like the way you, the way they move and the way you fight, and they give you different weapons. But for the most part, the sprite work is is the same. And of course, uh, Magic Man. I think it's Magic. I want to say Magic Man. Magic Man takes uh, stage assets from uh, Clown Man on Mega Man 8, and and so on. I almost like this game better than Mega Man X. In fact, I, I, I kind of do. Mega Man X is the better game, of course, but I, I really enjoy this game much better. I actually enjoyed Mega Man 7 more than Mega Man X, just because I like the traditional number Mega Mans and having to fight Dr. Wily. Of course, charging up the Mega Buster. And I have beaten the Game Boy Advance version. Again, it's a little more difficult than the Super Nintendo version because of the resolution. Gameplay and everything is pretty much identical. There might be some differences and I'm not aware of, but for the most part, it's pretty identical. Of course, some of the weapons and uh, power-ups that you buy with the bolts, you got to kind of look up to see what icon is which and what it does, unless you know how to read Japanese. That's on the Super Nintendo version, of course. I keep saying Super Nintendo version. When I say Super Nintendo version, I actually mean the Super Famicom version, by the way. So. And I can actually show how to um, modify the Super Nintendo to play Super Famicom games real quick. I'll do that before I end the video. All you need is just a set of pliers or something. Ah, oh, gosh dang, I, why am I having so much trouble with that? It's alright. There we go. Ugh. I'm not going to start this video over. I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to power through it. Epic fails. It's alright. We're not fixing it in post-production. Or... <laughs> We're going to keep playing. We're going to keep playing. <laughs> that, that's half the fun. I say fun loosely of using an actual game capture. There we go. There we go. There we go. Of course, Cold Man was right there the whole time. So if you watch on the Super Nintendo side, you'll see uh, the trick to beating Burner Man is you wait till he's using his weapon and you use the Cold Man's weapon against him and push him into the spikes. That's the trick. Right, so I gotta concentrate on the game that I am playing and not the footage. Almost got him. There we go. So yeah, if you saw it on that battle, and it takes a while to kind of get the hang of it, but uh, you uh, you put the ice block and then you push it forward as he's like jumping and doing like the, the fire wave attack, and then you push him into the spikes and it does quite a bit of damage. The Ice Wall, that's the name of it. Of course, on the final stage, it's just a bunch of gates you gotta unlock. 
which is basically kind of a, to teach you how to um, use each weapon. So I'm going to play Burner Man on this one as well. Actually, yeah, I'll play Burner Man. So of course there you see me uh, buying on the Super Nintendo side a bunch of uh, weapons to power up uh, Mega Man. Like auto charging and things like that. No, nothing complicated or fancy like in um, in Mega Man 8. Of course, the ice block also functions as as a kind of a uh, thing to jump on to get some extra height. Of course, it's also a very powerful weapon in this too. So we're gonna rely on it a lot. Here, we'll just shoot this guy. There we go. <clears throat> and of course, on the Super Nintendo side, you'll see me playing the Pirate Man stage. Of course, you know, Hucky, not like a robot master named after a pirate. <laughs> and that used, um... God, what, what's... what's I forget the name of the enemy that it used for Mega Man 8. Uh, Aquaman. Yeah, it used Aquaman stuff. You know, the one that says you can call him Handsome Guy. <laughs> no, seriously, that, that's not, like a line that he says in that game. Like, voice acted. <laughs> oh. Of course, you can also throw the ice block and just kind of balance on it. But there we go. Jumped over it. We'll use the ice block here. Pass that guy. It. There we go. Just go straight up. Not worry about the energy there. We'll get some more energy over here. Right, right under this. There we go. I don't have the power up. Oh, let's grab that energy real quick. I don't have the power up to automatically go to the weapon energy, so I'll just switch that real quick. How many guys do I got left? I don't have any reserve guys, so if I die on Burner Man, that's that's going to be it right here. Yeah, the music on this, on the Game Boy Advance version, almost sounds a little more like a Genesis version or something like that. Not there's anything wrong with it, it just sounds more like more meaty. Where the Super Nintendo version sounds more like instrument samples. And some games kind of translated better than others in terms of the music from Super Nintendo counterparts. Like, of course, uh, Mario and Zelda did. Um, this game, not so much. That's alright. And here is a good spot to kind of farm extra guys. Energy, bolts. Oops. I just want, like, some energy energy. There we go. Just keep going. Alright, now this... You gotta be careful because you don't want to. You don't want the ground to be burning up as you're standing on it. Of course, you can see a lot of the. If you're used to playing uh, Mega Man 8 on Saturn and PlayStation 1, you'll see a lot of sprite work being taken from Mega Man 8.
And I barely made that one. <laughs> uh, and we'll use the ice barrier there to take care of him. All right, now let's see if we can beat Burner Man. We got an extra guy. There we go, in the spikes. Yeah, yeah. Almost, almost. I was close. I was close. How much ice energy do I got left? Uh, oh yeah, I got plenty. All right, we'll hold a shot this time and we'll release it as soon as the battle starts. You don't want to waste your ice energy when he's just doing his normal movements. Got him, we got him. There we go. Gotta make sure that doesn't happen off screen. Ah, That's alright. We'll play a different stage just because we're uh, playing here. Like uh, Astro Man. Astro Man is one of the characters from uh, Mega Man 8 that they just ported right over. Of course, I won't be able to beat him because I don't have the weapon to beat him with. But well, just to kind of show off the game, some game stuff here. Of course, on the Super Nintendo version in this game, it shows a little bit more of the floor. But yeah, they did a really good job with uh, the animation and the sprite work, porting it over from the PlayStation game. to beat those uh, fuses there to unlock that you got to have the burner man's weapon yeah this stage here you can really tell it hurts in the music So we got to play a little bit of Simon here. There's some really cool weapons in this game too. I mean, they, they did a really good job bringing some pretty cool, unique weapons in this one. Throw that in. See, I almost didn't catch that. Yeah, I remember this being a challenge now. Yeah, there's a couple parts of that where it gets really challenging. That right there. <laughs> oh, almost, almost. Bummer. <laughs> anyway, that's Mega Man 8 for, uh, not Mega Man 8, that is Mega Man and base for the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy Advance. Um, actually, let me show off the Super Nintendo thing real quick. Um, just a 
quick reminder, uh, my channel is still kind of up and growing. So if you could share this video, because it doesn't pop up in a lot of recommended feeds, that will help give it some more exposure and that'll help out my channel and get me to make more videos for you guys to enjoy. And of course, like and subscribe. But let me grab my Super Nintendo real quick. It's just right there. So here's my Super Nintendo. Of course, I got a wireless uh, controller adapter here. But to get this to play Super Famicom games, if you look underneath it, uh, if it hasn't been modified, you'll see these two classic tabs that prevent um, a Famicom or Super Famicom game from going down into it. Like if you take a Super Nintendo game and look at the back of it, you'll see some exposed plastic so it fits in there. So all I gotta do is just take a little piece of pliers and just kind of break away the, those little plastic pieces. And then your Super Famicom games will just fit right in and it'll work perfectly. There is no region coding onto the hardware. The, the hardware on a, an American Super Nintendo and a Japanese Super Famicom are identical. So yeah, I mean, in fact, the board in this Super Nintendo, I actually had to replace it and I actually used a, a Japanese Super Famicom. <laughs> so, which is a one chip. So that's why um, my capture footage on Super Nintendo side looks so dang good because it's a one chip Super Nintendo. But anyway, uh, that's it for today. Uh, please let me know what you think down below in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for coming to my video. If you would like to help my channel grow, please like and subscribe, and please click on this little bell icon so you never miss a future video.